Hey guys, today I'm going to be preparing for the zombie apocalypse by installing five of these 315 watt solar panels on top of my RV. I could put them on my house, but what happens when the zombies come and I got to hightail it out of here? I think the best option for me is to put these on my RV and I might be able to survive. So let's get started. Hey guys, here is my RV. This is a 2012 Puma Palomino. So in here is the solar power system I put in my RV before I went jump to the install video of the solar panels. I wanted to show you this. This is my battery, my combiner box, and my solar charge controller and inverter here. Now my solar panels on my roof are going to be in one large string. And these, the solar panel wire, this comes straight from my roof through some cabinets inside the RV, out here and down here. And then uh, that's for one string of solar panels. Now, if I want to hook more strings of solar panels up, I can just hook another string there, hook another string there, another string there. And th this is a combiner box, and so it combines all these strings and sends the power out through here and into my charge controller. Okay, so here's our roof. That's a 12 volt solar panel. We're going to be getting rid of that one. We're going to be getting rid of this. So we'll put one big solar panel right here, another right here. And next, this panel is not mounted yet, but next I'm gonna have one panel right there, one panel right there, and another panel right here. And I could fit another panel right here. This goes, this is a vent that opens up, goes to my bathroom. I wish they had like a lower profile vent I could use in place of this and have it still like open up from the inside and vent out. And then I could fit an extra panel. So if you know of any uh, lower profile vent covers, please let me know. Before I talk about mounting these solar panels, I just want to be clear. This way I'm going to mount my solar panels may not work for you. My roof is made up of two layers of this particle board, but yours might be metal. And also my roof has a little bit of a bow. So it's not perfectly flat on the top. So yours might be different. So before you start drilling holes into your roof, it's probably best to like call the manufacturer or see what, how they recommend you mount things to the top of your roof, just to be safe. So I just got back from driving to California and there was a crazy windstorm. Here's a little snippet of the windstorm, literally blowing this RV off the road. But, so originally I was thinking having my solar panels a little bit mounted a little bit higher off the roof to get a little bit of air underneath the solar panels. But after that, when seeing that windstorm, I think I want my solar panels more close to the roof so they don't blow off as easy. It always seems like wherever I go, I've got, I'm always like in a headwind. But I definitely don't want the solar panels to like restrict my travels. If there's like a wind, any sort of windstorm, I don't want that to restrict where I'm gonna go and, and camp. So I'm gonna go with something a little bit lower profile like this. Here's my old 100 watt solar panel I have on my roof, which I'm gonna be taking off. And basically it uses this bracket I have, I got on Amazon. So it goes up under, the, under as I go, it mounts right here. And you, you screw it right into the roof and you use some die core to seal the, the, uh, the holes you put in your roof. So this bracket's gonna hook right on here onto the solar panel, just like that. And then I'm gonna put some 3M VHB tape right on this section right here. This is the tape, it's double-sided, like really strong, heavy-duty sticky tape. And I have seen people on YouTube mount their solar panels to the roof without drilling any holes and just using like this tape. I actually ended up not using the tape and using die core instead. But I'm also going to drill these holes uh, uh, to, to fasten it. I'm going to fasten it to my RV by drilling, uh, by using these holes and, and putting screws in place as well. So these are the screws that come with my mounting bracket. I actually don't like these screws at all because look at that. That looks like that tip, it's self-tapping tip for metal and um, it'll drill out my particle board and then the teeth of this screw may not have a lot to hook grab onto 
So I went to the store and I bought these outdoor screws so they shouldn't rust and the teeth are specifically for a particle board. So I think these will hold a lot better. This is what I'm going to use instead. So another thing regarding the rails, if I were to put like a, a big a big rail right here and a rail right here, they're, they're only you can only have wind going this way because the rail would stop a lot of the wind from blowing underneath the panel, which would cool the panel. So I want wind to pass through the panel and not have a rail that's kind of blocking the wind. And if I stick these, these, these uh, little brackets in, three brackets on each side, I'll at least have a little bit of uh, room for the air to pass in theory, even though it is sitting a little bit closer to my, the top of my RV. Um, I still think it'll allow a little more wind. And one more thing, with these solar panels, the way I'm going to mount them, they're not going to be able to angle into the sun. And I have angled them in the past. I built like some rack system where I could like tilt it towards the sun when I'm camping. But I found that even though I put that on, after like two years, I never used it once. Because when you get camping, you go and you just, you know, sit out on your lawn chairs and just relax and talk to people. You don't want to get up on your RV and like mess with your solar panels. I should have tons of power for these solar panels as is, so. I, th I dinged one, one of my panels right here when I was drilling. Probably want something uh, protecting the panel while you drill. So it's three quarter inch particle board. It's, that'll be good to know when I grab the when I buy the grabber screws. See right in. Four and a quarter inch thick roof. So that's interesting. That's just a rubber rubber mat glued to the top.
I was able to find these awesome clips which clipped my wires onto my solar panels so they wouldn't flap in the wind. I really like these. I'll put a link to all these items in the description. Next, I set my solar panels on the roof without screwing them down in the exact spots I wanted them. And I marked all of the brackets with a pen so I, so I knew where they were, be, they were gonna end up after I screwed them down. Uh, then I covered my solar panels with these towels. A lot of energy going through these solar panels especially since I was hooking all five of them together. And I didn't want to get shocked. So that's why I covered the solar panels. And then I hooked them all together in series. And I used the clips to uh, clip them underneath all the wires. This is the last solar panel in the string of solar panels. And so I've got this hotline needs to run all underneath all of the solar panels and clip into the cable that is coming out of my ceiling. Luckily I didn't have to make any custom length cables. I think this cable was like a 12 foot length I ordered on Amazon and I could clip the excess length onto the underneath section of the solar panels using these clips. I only ended up using VHB tape on three of the brackets because uh, it was just taking a lot way too long to put the, this tape on there and clean off the the rv roof so for the other brackets i just put the die core and then i screwed the solar panels down with the screws okay guys i think i got it all wired up let me show you what i got <clears throat> so i haven't screwed them down i was gonna test the solar output first. So let's see how much power we have coming out of these panels. The sun is really far on the horizon. Got a little bit of shade right here. Okay, so everything's turned off right now. It's green, so that means it's safe to work on on this system. So let me just check the polarity before I flip the switch and turn it on. So I looked at the positive and made sure the positive was connected to the positive and negative was connected to the negative now i'm ready to turn it on here i'm getting 306 watts from my solar panels the battery is at 83 percent right next day we got pretty good sun a couple clouds up there Let's see how much power we got Fifteen. Whoa, almost 1,600 watts of power. That's awesome. Over the amount. It's a really good day though. 60% battery life. This thing's gonna be charged in no time. That is awesome. So now that everything looks good and my wires are fastened securely underneath my solar panels, I'm gonna screw my solar, solar panels down permanently. Here you can notice I prop my solar panel up Apply some die core and then push it down onto the die core and then I'm able to put screws in. And do the same thing with the solar panels on the front. I really like this die core. I'm positive that I won't have any leaks in the roof. I feel really good about that. As the last step, I think I'm going to wrap these exposed wires in some white conduit hose and then fasten that down to the roof. Actually, second thought, I think I'm going to just cover those wires with this smooth aerodynamic roof sealant tape. I think that'll look really good. Where your cables go into your roof, you have this double entry weather gland that you can buy on Amazon. So how many solar panels do you actually need? So I got by with my 100 watt solar panel for like years and I love that thing so much that I decided to take it to the next level with this setup. Now. With this, I was able to run my electric fridge and then I started my microwave. While my microwave was running, I flipped on my air conditioner and ran it. And it just did just fine with this setup I have. If you want to go really cheap, you can buy a lot of used solar panels. So this is a group of used solar panels. These are 240 watts. You can get these, pick these up for 50 bucks a piece. So some people might say, well, what if the sun's not out? I need my generator around, my loud generator. I'm not really concerned about that at all. This thing, 
this battery can run my micro my air conditioner for five hours straight and when the clouds are out my solar panels are still uh, collecting energy just not just not as much so in this i'm going to add two extra plugs so my neighbor my friends that come camping with me can plug their 30 amp rvs into my rv and they can have power so with these plugs that I'm going to stick on the side of the RV, I'm going to have the ability to run my fridges and my furnace in my house in case there's an emergency. Also, in case there's an emergency, I can run those really cheap used solar panels and uh, plug them in right here, plug an extra five panels in here, an extra five panels and an extra five panels. I can have 20, 20 panels here and that should be able to run my critical appliances in my house. Even during cloudy conditions, so I'll do a test on that later, but uh, that should be able to run everything. I, if my power goes out for four days, I won't be able to, I won't have to have a generator running for four days straight and maintain that generator. This thing can just keep it running. So I don't think I'll ever have to do that, but it's nice to know I could. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this helps somebody. Hopefully these way I install these solar panels will work out. I think it'll work out really good, but thanks guys. Uh, see you next time.